Hi, my name's Alex, and I play tabletop war games. Well, honestly, I paint miniatures a lot for the war games I play when I'm not painting, and I paint a lot. This video is not on how to paint your miniatures, techniques, and that. Rather, a collection of considerations that may be worthwhile taking into account when painting miniatures for the tabletop. Regardless of how you paint, at what standard you paint, if you play war games, skirmish games, RPGs or board games. And what I'm about to present is not rules, rather observations. Observations that you should decide upon if they are important or not. My observations are based solely on painting for the tabletop, not necessarily for the best looking mini on Instagram. This is a tabletop the soon-to-be feast for crows, and most often other snacks too. When I play games, there's usually terrain involved. The terrain I built myself, the MDF terrain I haven't painted yet, the rattle can because I haven't gotten to building a wizard's tower. There's always dice, lots of dice, rulers, rule books, expensive little cards that say the same as the rule books and are probably already out of date. Some small whiteboard marker things so that I can write down, thus see what my little soldier folk do without having to look at the expensive cards or the rule book. Objective markers, maybe a dice tray, and of course, miniatures. Quite a bit going on, really. Playing war games, the overall consensus has decided that standing up is the way to play. It keeps me from painting minis when it's not my round. Smaller skirmish games can be played seated. Board games usually are, and so the average standing versus sitting distance from our eyes to the tabletop is roughly two feet up and half a foot back. That's where I'm placing my camera, with a lens that is the rough estimate of what our two eyes see minus all the peripheral nonsense. And here we are, the source of my observations, the demonstration of potential considerations, the tabletop. What is visible or readable? What looks exciting? What is practical out of a gaming perspective? What brings awe and maybe even fear into the heart of your opponent? Well, I don't know that last one. But let's start the observations. The most visual parts of a miniature on the tabletop are the surfaces pointing up at roughly a 45 degree angle all around the miniature. Obviously, whatever takes place under your nose will be seen from up top, and the further away the miniature is from you, the more sides will be visible. But I'm trying to keep things relatively simple here. Admittedly, there is something slightly off with this experiment. I've got my fancy lights on. Some Dungeons and Dragon folks are more sensitive to gaming ambience. Wargamers, on the other hand, tend to enjoy the worst mankind has to offer in the lighting department. Painting under a good quality daylight temperature light source is great for colour representation and seeing all the little fiddly bits. But it does not represent the fact that your tabletop gaming miniature will most probably not live its active life in similar conditions. Because of their small size, miniatures need exaggerated contrast or volume, deep shadows and bright highlights to not look flat. It's just the nature of small things. Dull lighting at the gaming table does not improve this. It actually makes things worse. There's even more to this, the light thing. Gaming tables unfortunately tend to be placed not only under dull, uninteresting light, it's also most often under varyingly coloured light of varying quality. And even though our eyes are great at adjusting for these things, colour rendition suffers. Certain colours just don't read well under warm light. And if we're going to go real deep, certain light sources emit light that is actually missing important frequencies in the light spectrum. Sounds complicated? Yeah. You'll have to Google it if you're intrigued, but just as an example, I painted under a cheap LED light recently that made green and blue almost indistinguishable to the eye. So what does this mean? Should we change how we paint minis because the game store has real bad lighting over the gaming table? Uh, no. Remember, these are not rules, just observations. But here's a line of thought on colour schemes. I love muted colours, the dreary, war-torn, dirty, dystopian, grimdark, all that. 
But being frank, it doesn't really pop as well on the table. This unit of Stormcasts look to my eye lovely, close up. But compared to this space monkey with bright orange hair and future fairy moon boots, they do come across as a bit dull on the table. Or compared to this attempt at a bit more colourful grim dark, or these future space orcs, colour does draw the eye. Even though utterly war-torn, fluorescent magenta and bright blue will sing at you, regardless of the lighting situation. Another thing that stands out on the table is contrast. I'll make life easy and say there are two kinds of contrast. One is the contrast of the actual paint job, like if my grey stormcast would have had a bit more oomph, you know, darker shadows and brighter highlights, they would have more impact on the table. But there is also contrast as in pleasingly contrasting colour schemes and contrasting patterns. Black and white checkers, red crosses on white backgrounds, yellow and black stripes. It all tickles the eye. And finally we have metallic paints. There are not many things out there that are more potent when it comes to visibility as metallic paints. Because they actually reflect light. The dull yellow light of your kitchen table hits that gold and shoots it right back into your opponent's eye. The temporary blinding sensation will surely win you this round. Exaggerating? Sure. But a metallic paint, painted mini, will be visible on the table. Just look at these dragon wings. And what about the practical gaming aspects, the use of paint because it helps gameplay? This is as far away from why I paint as we can get, but it's usable in-game. A very specific, reoccurring issue of mine when playing Age of Sigmar, for example. I have a squad. One fellow is better than the other fellows. It's the boss. One should keep the boss in the middle. Because of rules, when a unit takes losses, one removes minis on the furthest sides of a unit to retain uh, an annoying thing called coherency. But I never pay attention to who is boss. They all look the same, so the boss, because of Murphy's Law, always ends up on the furthest side. And thus, the poor fellow perishes. A different colour scheme on the boss would maybe be the reminder I need to keep it alive. Or how about different units having different colour schemes? Painting different squads, troops, special units in their respective colour schemes can probably aid the serious gamer, seeing the table more as a layout than precious brush strokes. Board games with character miniatures are a definitive selling point when it comes to using colour to aid players remember who's who. The green elf, the red demon, the, the silver armoured dwarf, the very flesh-coloured half-naked loincloth barbarian. One colour colour schemes can be a thing, right? I'm the green one remember, move the red one, that's you. I painted some Stormcast recently for my new army, but not quite done, and you know, more detailed videos on that to come, on the story, why they look like this, and how I did it. But I kind of tried to practice a little of what I've been talking about. The use of colour and the use of contrast. Definitely using stronger colour than I did in my previous army, trying to add contrast with deeper shadows and brighter highlights, but also using patterns to further bring visual interest. The contrast of the black and white symbols on the shields and on the standard are as striking as the choice of colours. I painted the boss with gold instead of copper armour to make sure I know who's who. I mean, they're pretty visible, right? And so some painting thoughts. If we're pretty much just seeing the top side of our miniatures, putting effort into what's going on further down it might be a bit of a waste, regardless of level of painting. A Zenithal Prime, for example, is a pretty good guide of where to spend your time with a brush. On these, I mean I paint at my preferred standard, but I'd say at least a quarter of one of these minis is just black or dark grey. Under the arms, insides of the legs, behind the shield, there's, I just don't paint any detail. And then the boots and that would probably just be dusted with pigment powders anyway. These dragons, I mean, I don't think I'd be giving them much attention on the underside of the wings. It'll look terrible on full frontal Instagram, but I'm never going to see anything but the overside of them when gaming. And I did get them for gaming. Details, on the whole, I guess are a bit of a waste. But this is so individual. I can't paint without doing a relatively detailed paint job. I haven't got anything else in me. But are they visible? A couple of feet away? That's another story. If painting eyes is fun, 
for you, do it. If you hate it, don't do it. I've found for me that painting under too bright a light makes me paint bland. Everything just looks great under the painting lamp, but then in any other environment, things look dull. By reducing the strength of my painting lamp to the lowest possible setting whilst still being bright enough to not strain my eye, I've been getting better and less dull minis. I also check every now and again while painting what the mini looks like in a regular gaming setting and not only under my dedicated painting lamp. I find that usually I have to push things brighter, highlight more, saturate more if I want things to stand out on the table. And back to game stores or your kitchen table's terrible warm lighting. When it comes to color, some colors don't mind getting warmer. Yellow becomes a yellow, yellow, lovely color. Your green might look a little bit less elf and a little more Sherwood. Worst things could happen. The most affected, we could even call it receptible to any tint, is white. All those lovely skeletons who spent so much time with the crows to get their bones picked nice and clean, all of a sudden turned yellow. In cases like white, I might consider working with cooler shades, white with cool shadows, to compensate for the potential game store yellowing. I mean, any pale colors suffer pretty much. Pale skin tones, undead, all that, I'd consider doing cooler versions rather than warmer. If you're hell-bent on painting grim dark, brown, enamel-washed, zombie, horde, because this is what rocks your boat, maybe consider adding color in some way. Even just the splatter of bright blood or the one strip of cloth that really just pops. The gleam of metallic paint of whatever weaponry is about. At least the turnips can be white and purple, right? Games Workshop box art ticks a lot of these boxes. A full golden metallic paint stormcast army, a primary colored space marine army. I mean, there is reasons for why this stuff looks like it does. But I'm not saying you have to do that to get an army with a lot of visible impact on the table. I think just being aware of what your army or warband looks like in their natural habitat is a very strong tool. Do what I did. Stop only taking decisions under the painting light you're so used to. Put them all on your kitchen table and, you know, look at them. Got a brown blob and you like it? Go for the brown blob. If not, think of what might make them stand out a bit. Look at other armies. If you visit a game store with that kind of stuff going on, see what makes other people's armies stand out. In real life, on the table, under bad lighting. I'm kind of excited to see where my new army ends up. I'm having fun balancing thoughts of visual impact with the stories of who these folk are, intent on painting an army that will stand out more than my last one, but that is still fun for me to paint. I hope my slightly all over the place thoughts might have given you some food for thought. I find we talk a lot about specific techniques, specific schemes, specific tricks, specific tools, but not often do we talk about what stuff looks like in general on the table. Even though, for a lot of us, that is where all the minis go in the end. Please consider supporting me in my plan to conquer the known universe. I mean to create more videos like this one. Yeah, yeah, Patreon is a great place. There's a Discord channel and everything. Nothing at all in there about conquering stuff. Nothing, uh, just miniature painting. Also, there's merch, great merch. And uh, yeah, don't forget to like and subscribe and all that. Bye now.